Photographers have always been taught that the best light for outdoor portraiture exists just after sunrise and just before sunset. The light at these times is perfect, but it's not convenient for our clients. Not only did clients want to be photographed during the middle of the day, we also found that travel to and from locations for a single client during the ideal times of light made outdoor photography less profitable than photography in the studio. This is why we started scheduling blocks of appointments at a single location. Often I'll be at a location for an entire morning, afternoon, sometimes the whole day. This meant I had to learn how to work with the light as it changed throughout the day. For a location to even be usable for this type of lighting, you have to pick somewhere that has fully grown trees or tall buildings to provide the needed shade. Finding usable backgrounds during the middle of the day is definitely the most challenging thing. This is the kind of area that we like to work in. It's a basic setup. It's great. The sun is behind her, so if any light does filter through the trees, it just becomes a hair light. We also use this to, because when you're outside, you have two choices. You can either use the existing light and try to modify it, or you can overpower the existing light, which is what we're going to be doing here with the reflector. The reflector has a lot of, you have a lot of sunlight. The one complaint I hear from photographers about working with a reflector is that they don't work with an assistant to actually hold the reflector. If you're working with single subjects in an outdoor location, and especially underage clients like seniors, to protect yourself and your business legally, you should always work with an assistant. When using a reflector to avoid the problems of squinting and watery eyes, you simply have to feather the main beam of directed sunlight above the subject's head and use just the softer edge light to illuminate them. The reflector should be placed in the same approximate position as your main light would be in the studio. The height of the reflector is determined by the angle of the subject's face and how high or low the camera is going to be positioned. During the midday hours like this, I often lower the camera angle because the ground is by far the most burnt up part of any given background. By lowering the camera angle, you pick up more of the greenery in the trees. This is all the equipment that we use. We have a changing tent, we have two reflectors, I have a Canon 5D with a 70-200 2.8 lens. All the shots are taken wide open, ISO 400 with a raw capture. The light from your reflector becomes your main light. The ambient light provides your fill. Since we're overpowering the existing light with diffused sunlight, the color temperature and therefore the overall coloration of your photographs is very consistent as you move from one area or scene to another. In selecting a main light source, battery powered studio flash isn't really a viable option since you can't see the exact lighting effects on the face. Although digital cameras have a display, it's too small to judge the lighting effects on the face, and outdoors the quality of these previews are very limited, even with the covers and magnifiers that are available. On-camera flash is not a professional quality light source. If I were to give you an on-camera flash and send you into a studio and tell you to create a professional quality portrait, you'd laugh, but people use them outdoors all the time. Some photographers use a TTL flash to fill the shadow and to minimize color variations. We are not filling shadows, we are raising the quality of light to balance with the background by replacing the main light source. Fill flash works best under the ideal times of outdoor lighting, and at these times there are better choices. In the middle of the day, you have to choose backgrounds carefully, especially if there are elements that are lighter in color or reflective surfaces like this water. Once I find a workable background, I then rotate around the subject to get the best camera position. In this uneven terrain, it's easy to raise or lower the camera height. But in most outdoor locations, I'll go from laying on the ground to standing on a four-foot ladder to get the best background by changing the camera elevation. Okay. 
The key to success in an outdoor session is variety. No client wants to see a session that they see themselves in three different outfits under the exact same tree. Look for different interesting scenes within the same area of a park or location to keep from trekking all over the park or hillside. Join me on Facebook for new ideas, excerpts from my books, and much more. For more information on outdoor photography or for any of my books, they're available at Amazon.com or Better Bookstores everywhere. For questions or comments, you can email me directly at jeff at jeffsmithphoto.com.